This is the first time I've really showed my tomato. Like I said, old sneaky stick over there, Travis ain't showing me nothing on his tomato. But I know he's sneaky. He can't stand to lose. <laughs> but Papa gonna beat him. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Poor Boy's Little Homestead. As always, if this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. I'm standing down here in the garden. What you guys doing way off up there in them cheap seats? Y'all come on down here and let's get a little closer look at the garden today. Guys, today we're going to look at our tomatoes. I had to do a little doctor work on my tomatoes. Had to put some cask on a couple of them. I'm going to give y'all a sneak peek at my big Zach tomato I'm growing for my tomato growing contest. And then we got some taters we got to dig. Now guys, before we take a look at these tomatoes, I'm going to tell y'all, I come out here two or three days ago. And I got so many tomatoes and they so big, my vines was broke. They wasn't broke all the way off but they were just almost and barely hanging together on a couple of these plants. Well, I mean, I was like, I hate to lose all them tomatoes. And I wasn't out here videoing nothing, but I did video on what I did, and I'm gonna attach that clip right here for y'all to watch. Guys, hey, your tomatoes ever been so big and so heavy? You have to do surgery on them. Well, we finna see if we can take this right here together to keep it from tearing on apart. This is just black electrical tape I'm using. And the only thing kept that from breaking off is because I had one of these plastic clips around it to that string. I'm hoping it's still on there good enough to grow them tomatoes on out. If I can take this and keep it held together. And this ain't the only one I got to do like this. Give y'all a close up to my repair I put on this tomato plant. And I got another one right here, and this is on the brandy wine. Guys, y'all look at the big tomatoes, how loaded they are. And again, the only thing that kept that from breaking off, even though I had it hanging on two strings, apparently I didn't have my strings tight enough. The only thing that kept that from breaking all the way off is that bottom clip. So 
I'm gonna take this electrical tape right here and pull that together. Now I know it ain't gonna grow back together, but I'm just trying to keep it from breaking on off. I can't say that I've ever grew any tomatoes that made tomatoes big enough to do this. Now my concern here is, is I know this tape I hold at, but my concern is when it rains, if water gets under that tape, is it gonna cause it to rot in too? That's my concern. That's what she looks like after I taped her back together. So now y'all watch the clip on what I did We've been to look at them, and like I said, this has been about three days ago. No, it may be four four days ago now since I've done that. But we're going to look at that little cask, I call it, and put on there, and see what they looking like. Also, we're going to look at our tomatoes here, and I'm going to show y'all my big Zach tomato. Now, when I show y'all this big Zach tomato, I don't want y'all running over there to Travis on Lazy Dog Farm and telling him what pawpaws got growing. Because this is probably going to be, well, there ain't no probably to it. Once this one gets plum ripe, this is going to be my first tomato to weigh in. But we ain't got no rules, see? I still got the rest of the year to even try to grow one bigger than I got growing right now. But this is gonna be the first one and I just wanted to give y'all a sneak peek. But I don't want y'all going over there telling me nothing. Cause I'm gonna tell y'all something about old Slick Willie over there. Old Slick Willie Travis ain't even talking about his Big Zack tomato or his Big Kellogg breakfast tomato. He ain't even talking about it. Ain't been showing nothing. But I know he's slick. He's got something going on. He's probably got a plant off somewhere else. He done pulled all of the tomatoes off and probably got one tomato on there so he can beat me. And he ain't showing that. But I'm showing this to y'all and I don't want him to know about it. So let's go down through here and let's look at these tomatoes here. First up, guys, we're going to look down through here. And this is the new trellis where y'all seen me if you watch my videos. If you didn't, I'll try to attach it above on where I built this trellis where you just string them up. And I'm really liking this. And then in case you ain't been watching, my other row over here, I just got them caged with my old TPs on top with my strain gun down because I like stringing them from the top even though they're in a the cage because... As you can see, some of them tomatoes is already about 16, 18 inches above the cage. So I string one vine all the way up to the tip, and then I let them just hang back over as they grow. But on this first one right here, this is our cherry keys, and you can see, I guess you can see, it's just loaded. And we got one starting to turn down there. But these tomatoes is so loaded, I had to put three strands on them to help hold them up. The next one right here is our Kellogg's breakfast. It ain't got as many tomatoes on it 
but it's loaded down here at the bottom. And guys, this is one of the ones I had to do the surgery on. And you see I got two vines strung up on it with the tomatoes growing. But that's where we done our little surgery on it. And the only concern I'm having is if water gets in under that tape, cause that's just electrical tape, that's all that is. But the only thing kept this plant together, if I wouldn't have had that little clip on this string, it would have broke clean off. So that little clip saved me cause it split it all the way down to that clip. The next one over here is the brandy wine. And it was the other one I done the surgery. But guys, look at them big tomatoes. I mean, that's bigger than my fist. Several of them. But this is the other one I done the surgery. And again, if it wouldn't have been for that clip, actually it was a clip up here. That one would have ripped plum off and I would have lost all these tomatoes. And there's some big tomatoes on there. And still got blooms are coming. And still are growing. Now I'm sweating like a, I don't know what today, cause it is hot and humid. We just got a rain real quick. Now up next is my big Zach. Now, I know I'm in a big tomato contest. And I know to grow the biggest tomato, you would need it to take a lot of your tomatoes off your plant. Really, if you was just in an outright wanting to give it your all, you would want to take them all off but that big one you grow. I ain't took but two tomatoes off of this plant. And here's going to be my first weigh-in. Now, I'm going to say that tomato's about, just me guessing with my finger, six inches in diameter. And then there's another one right above it that it might end up being a bigger tomato. But guys, I couldn't make myself, I don't care if I am in a competition, I couldn't make myself pull these tomatoes off just to grow a big tomato. So, like I said, y'all don't go over telling Trav, because I know Trav, he can't stand to lose no competition. And I know he's got something up. And he's probably got him a plant where he's got all of his tomatoes pulled off, growing that big one. I don't know. But y'all just let him wonder. Y'all just let him wonder what Papa's got going on. And here's next is my Indian Stripes. You can see they pretty, all these tomatoes is loaded, guys. I got two right there, it's gonna be just a couple days. I done got one Indian stripe off this, this vine. And you can see there's more blooms. This next one's another Indian stripe that I planted later. That's why it's so short. It's just got small tomatoes on it. There's one little red one right there I can pick today. I'll probably leave it on till tomorrow. Them small tomatoes. And I don't know about you if you, some of you watching my videos, my little tomato plant. Y'all remember that thing? I said I was gonna leave it. Well, it's still hanging on. Actually, it looks better than it did the last video. <laughs> but it still don't look good. But I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it. Because like I said, if this little plant overcomes it, through all the stress and stuff, and makes a little tomato plant, it's going to be a stout little plant. 
So as long as it ain't dead, I ain't got nothing else to put in this place. So it's gonna go there. It's gonna stay there. And last on this row was the Brad's Atomic Grapes. Now, I don't know if y'all ever seen these. This one's starting to turn color. They have purple and green, and that's about as big as they gonna get. Now, I tried growing these last year for the first time, but back when I got the seeds, it was dead in the middle of July or August when I planted them. And they didn't have a chance, and they only gave me a couple tomatoes, and they really wasn't good enough to do a taste test, so I wanted to do them again, but you can see all the clusters under there. Brad's Atomic Grapes. So if any of you out there has ever grew these, Brad's Atomic Grapes, put in the comments down there and let me know what you thought about them, what they taste like, or what they compare to. Like I said, I like growing different things, just trying it. And it's still, and it's still got blooms are coming. It's still growing. Y'all can see this thing's right at six foot tall already. And guys, coming back down the other row, this is the blue cream. You can see it's got little clusters. Not as many as it needs, but they got them are little bitty clusters, little bitty tomatoes. So it just may be behind, cause there's more blooms, more little clusters. They little bitty bitty right now. But it ain't as loaded as my other big tomatoes. There's some more clusters of them. I mean, I guess if you get to looking, it is a good bit in there. They just little bitty bitty at the time. They were just late, late getting going. The next one is the lollipop. And the next one up here is the tropical sunset. They just little cherry tomatoes. I grew them last year. They just something have for garden snacks. Got a little different flavors to them. Matter of fact, here's two right here. No one of them. Every one of them right there. This is the tropical sunset. Y'all can't see me, but I'm eating it right now. Next one up's another Indian Strike. In the cage, you can see it's got some good clusters down below. Couple clusters up top. Still making some blooms. And then our big Zach over here in the cage. Now, it ain't got no big, big tomatoes on it. It's got smaller tomatoes up in there. And that stands a reason, because they're so clustered up in, closed in tight and stuff, so the tomato ain't going to grow as big when they closed up like that. They ain't cut no suckers off this. And I can't say that this has, it don't even have as many tomatoes as the ones that strung over there. But also, guys, I don't know if y'all know it or not, and this may not have nothing to do with it, but this big Zach on this trellis over here, and that brandy wine right there on this trellis has fish buried in them holes under them plants that I buried several weeks before I planted these tomatoes. So, judge for yourself if you think burying fish under a plant helps. Comparing them on my garden right now, it makes a difference. But like I said, I've done that several weeks. Because see, here's the brandy wine straight across from it. It's got smaller tomatoes. Ain't as many tomatoes. Again, they in the cage, ain't had no suckers cut off of them. They all bushed up in there tight. So it could be a little bit of both. Could be a little bit of that and a little bit of the fish. Hmm. 
Kellogg's bricks. Same thing. Now, it's got plenty of tomatoes on it. I'd say it's probably got just as many as the ones over here that strung up. But they smaller again. So that's why I wanted to do this this year, comparing the cages versus the string. Then on the end are Cherokees. Now them down there on the bottom some big Cherokees. But then it's the same way. You've got tomatoes, but they're smaller. And again, it ain't as many tomatoes on there as compared to the ones that strung up over here. So I think stringing them gives you more tomatoes because it gives you more airflow. You can open stuff up. So the stringing's winning. Now the cages may come to life and have a benefit later on in the year when they get real tall and stuff, they may do good. But guys, that's a little update on my tomatoes I wanted to show you. And like I said, my plan when I done that this year, I wanted to compare them, the same tomato, side by side, one on the string, one in the cage. So far, you look at the ones in the cage down through there, for the most part, the plants and all is bigger, growing taller and stuff. The ones on the string, they ain't as bushy. And it may just be because I got them spread it out with two strings holding them up. They don't look as bushy as they do in that cage. They really don't look as tall, but they have more tomatoes and bigger tomatoes. So that's my stringing versus caging on my tomatoes. And I want to give y'all just an inside peek at that big Zach tomato. <laughs> All right, guys, we got to go dig some taters over here. Now, last year on my tractor tire bed, I took my tractor and I flipped that tire up. And I think it's hot and humid as it is, I might go get my tractor and me flip that bed up because we just got a good rain. So it's going to be kind of wet. I don't think it's going to be mud, though. But I think I'm going to flip my tractor tire up. That way I can get the potatoes out of it and see how many potatoes we got in our tractor tire this year. Last year I had red Lesotho potatoes planted in that same tractor tire. And I got one and a half five-gallon buckets. I got a video you can go back and watch out of that one tractor tire. So I'm kind of wanting to see if I got more this year than I had last year. I'm kind of hoping I got potatoes, period. You know, sometimes, sometimes you have potatoes grow and look like you got a bunch of potatoes and you not have many potatoes under there. So let's get over here and let's dig our taters. So first up guys, we're gonna pull these vines. I hope that ain't all the taters I got, some little bitty 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 ones right there. There's a potato come out of there. Hey, I didn't get skunk. I got one already. Nah, we're gonna have some taters. Guys, as you see over here, I got this truck tire. Got potatoes in it. See how it does. All right, guys, I'm going to run and dump my potato vines, and I'm going to bring my tater wagon so I have something to put my potatoes in. Now 
Now, guys, after I picked these potatoes out of here, then I moved the tire and get them out of that dirt back there. It just makes it a lot easier. I don't skim my potatoes up. Look at them big potatoes, guys. You can go to just about any tire shop that changes tractor tires and such, and guys, they give you these tires just to get them off, just to get them away from there. It's a good thing to garden in Cut your side wall out on the top, leave your side wall on the bottom. That helps hold moisture in there on them real dry, hot days. And look at them taters. These taters is way bigger than what I grew last year. These has been in the ground, I think today would be like 95 days. When I fix my potato bed up here, back in the fall, I put rabbit poop. Mixed in with the soil, a little chicken, I mean, a, a little quail manure, I mean. And then when I planted my potatoes, I fertilized them with triple 13. over here at a different angle now we get these out of this pile I don't know if this is going to be more potatoes than I had last year but there's some bigger potatoes in here Like I said, I ain't gonna say that's any more than I had last year. It looks about that looks about the same, about a one and a half five gallon buckets, but they bigger potatoes this year. Y'all just don't realize how humid it is right here in Louisiana after that rain. It is hot. And now I'm finna get my tractor and I'm gonna dump this tire out over here and see how well it done. Like I said, I didn't have this last year. Guys, these are some big potatoes too. Uh oh, I got one rotten potato. First one I see that was right, and it was all the way down on the bottom in the ground soil. Uh oh, and they're right in two. that was down here down in the very bottom there were three rotten potatoes all right guys i got them dug and i got my beds fixed back but what i done different this year i left a lot of that soil i had and i raised this tire up about six inches off the ground so that's why them three potatoes was right they was right down on this ground so i had to get me some more soil and finish filling that tire but i thought it needed raised up 
The tractor tire, pretty much the same, but just gonna need more soil. But the soil that's in there, I went on and added my rabbit poop as I was putting that soil back in there. And when I add more soil, I add my rabbit poop in there, so it'll just be in there. I don't think nothing else will get planted in here till the fall, and then I'll plant me some mustard greens in it. And that's mostly because mustard greens is good to plant where you're going to plant potatoes. So this fall, I'll plant mustard greens in these two tires. Even though I'm going to have some in ground, I just plant them in there, like I said, for a cover crop to help my soil. So guys, there's the potatoes that come out of this tractor bed in this 18-wheeler truck tire. That's two and a half five-gallon buckets easy. I was going to get some five-gallon buckets and get them out, but guys, I am so hot. I am sopping wet. It is so humid right after that rain comes through. But I knew I was going to have to dig my potatoes today because the next three days... I got work to do and wasn't going to be able to dig them. And I knew that it was time to be dug. So that's our potatoes. I ain't sure that that wouldn't be getting close to three five-gallon buckets. But it's two and a half five-gallon buckets easy. Which is supposed to be a little more than I had last year because I didn't have that tire. I think this tractor tire grew about the same amount of potatoes. I just got more bigger potatoes this year than I had last year. Like I said, that's red Lesotho potatoes. I try to let mine go anywhere from 80 to 110 days. And that's just going to vary where you are, what your temperature is, what your rain you got. It's basically, when you've seen them died back like when we started, that's time to harvest your potatoes. All I did when, I, of course, my rabbit manure and quail poop, I had amended in my soil through the winter. When I planted them potatoes, once they got up about four inches tall, I put a little triple 13 around them. And when they got up there about, I don't know, 10 inches, 12 inches tall, I got me a little soil and healed up around them, put just a little bit more triple 13. Other than that, all they've had is water. And one thing I tell you about your soil, if you're gonna try to grow potatoes in a bed, don't just fill your bed up with potting mix or just your compost. You need a soil that's not clay, but you need something a little bit thicker than just old potting mix or just compost you buy the bags. And the reason being, cause that, the water goes through it so fast. If you somewhere like where I live, where it's hot like this, you ain't gonna grow as many potatoes in that. Plus you're gonna be watering them every day. Get you some of your good ground soil wherever you live. If you got some good soil, that's all I did. And that's mixed up with compost. And yeah, it's probably got some bag of potting mix stowed in it that I had around. But you don't want to just go get potting mix and bags and put it in there because it won't hold enough water. Your potatoes needs a little more soil. I know potting mix got soil in it, but that ain't the same, same as when you dig soil out of your ground. You need a little... You need a little more soil that looks like dirt. That don't look like potting mix. That don't look like compost that you buy in a bag. That's just some good, good dirt. But guys, if you're new to my channel and you haven't never subscribed, if you would, reach down there and hit that subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. It don't cost you a thing, but it does help me out with my YouTube channel. If you like my little videos, please give me a thumbs up and share my videos with any of your friends and loved ones on your social media. That's the best way you can help me is by sharing my videos to get me out there where people can see that I have a channel and they'll come check it out. I'm not about just gardening. I have all types of videos. I got a website you can go check out, www.poorboyslittlehomestead.com. You can go check it out on your spare time. And as always, I hope y'all have a blessed day. God bless. See y'all next time.